Hello, hello. It feels fantastic to be sitting down here chatting with you. I hope you're having an awesome day today. Thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time to see how things went with the October makeup bag. It's been a really, really good month full of tons of progress. So I'm not really sure where to start. So I guess the best place to go would be to start with the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. My original intent for the month of October was really to make a ton of progress on Gilded Ganache, White Chocolate, Amaretto, maybe have a little bit on Hot Chocolate, but what I've ended up doing is I zeroed in on Gilded Ganache because I have loved, loved, loved the olive look that I am currently wearing, so I'm gonna go on and link it in the card above. If you want to see how I put it together, it is super easy. If you are working with most of your shades from the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette, and if you're not, it's very easy to work with it across your beloved palettes in your collection. Today I'm pairing it with a blue liner. It is super fun, super easy, and gives that fall vibe because it finally feels <laughs> like fall around here. So tons and tons of progress. I did have a couple of days where I made a little bit of progress with Amaretto, a little bit with hot chocolate, but like I said, Gilda Ganache and white chocolate in particular were the focuses of my palettes. So that being said, I also pulled in three other palettes. It ended up being four by the time everything was said and done. So the first palette that I additionally pulled out was the Kat Von D Maybe It'll Look a Remix palette. I wanted to get a really good feel for how I um, like or don't like the formula, um, how the shades would work and whatnot. And so um, I was working with a couple of shades. In fact, I went through... Um, one of the days, I need to film this look still, but I did a look that kind of is in the spirit of the um, ColourPop Yes Please palette with Amaretto using some of these oranges and yellows. But as you can see, the shade that I really made a lot of progress on is Vox, this really gorgeous brown shade up here. If you have dark hair, it's a nice alternative if you want another brow powder. I also had a little bit of progress on Black Metal but this has been great. I used it as a liner. I used it to fill in my brows. I also used it to deepen up the outer Vs of different eye looks, so great, great stuff. It feels good to hit pan, and because I've hit pan in that, I decided to go on and continue moving through my collection. Now, the next palette that I brought out was this little Z palette where I kind of have a hodgepodge of shades going on. Because I pulled out some warm browns, some purples, I enjoy pairing with that olive look, and I originally had another bare mineral shade in here that was an olive shade, but I ended up having to toss that because every time I wore it, it irritated my eyes. So I ended up not working out of this palette as much as I thought I would because I put that attention back into the Lorac Mega Pro palette and my MAC palette. So I did not include that in my original October makeup bag, but this has been the one that I've reached for every day for the shade right here called Sumptuous Olive. And like I said, that Get Ready With Me will be in the card above as well as the description box below. This is such an easy shade to pair with Gilda Ganache. I love, love, love it. So as you can see, I've started making a dip. I'm not gonna open this up because the shadows tend to fall out even though they're magnetized with this palette, so very strange. Um, but I've made tons of progress with Sumptuous Olive, but like I said, the exciting, exciting progress has been with this guy right here. Um, I'm gonna go on, and as I'm talking, I'm gonna insert a clip of where I was with um, September when I talked about um, where I'd be kind of currently working with uh, Project Pan Porn in this palette, and this is where I am today. Crazy, crazy progress. Um, let's first start off with the top row, the shades that I've made tons of progress in. I've enjoyed mixing camel and sepia together to give me a little bit of a warmer version of salted caramel. It is what I'm currently wearing in my transition area. I did make a little bit more progress on fawn, but really it's been these two. And in fact, I plan to uh, kind of clear out the um, top half of camel um, probably by mid-November. So. That feels really good. I was also able to finish the shade brown right here. I had substantial pan in it, so I took what was left and I started wearing it as a subtle contour. It worked really, really well, and it's helped me to kind of branch into another palette that I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, I had huge progress on the shade Sand down here. I enjoyed wearing it on its own as a highlight because previously, 
what I was doing with it was I mixed it with copper to get an exact dupe to the Lorac Pro's light bronze um, for this palette. So I had a really deep well going on in it. So it was nice to finish that off. Um, and because of that, I already had substantial pan and opal. So I started mixing opal and vanilla. I have a little bit of a dip going on with vanilla. So I wore that for a while. Now I'm back to a straight matte highlight to just um, go on and use white chocolate, get it through, get it done. I'm wearing it as a highlight on my face, a highlight on my eyes, um, just so that I can, you know, make some more progress. So that kind of covers this half of the palette. And then I'm also making a ton of progress on caviar over here to set my liner. Um, if I really want a black shadow, it's really, really pretty in the outer V of the eye. It's just a really, it's, it's a nice shimmery black. And then kind of the surprising one that I made, um, progress with is this matte gray up here. Um, I had a significant well in this one because I often paired it um, as I pan my Stila in the No palette because when I ran out of the smoke shade in there, which is also a really beautiful matte gray, I started going on and uh, dipping into this shade. So it didn't take me more than a couple of uses pairing this with Amaretto and then I'm also using um, Dusty Plum and Orchid with that look. So. It's gonna help me clear out another, I don't know, six, seven shades out of this palette. So, feels really good, really good. So, continuing Project Pan Horn with this one. I'm gonna go on and keep working on it. I haven't decided if I'm gonna go on and put it in for November Makeup Basket or switch to another palette, but know that it's always kind of in the, in the background. I'm quietly working on it without necessarily doing updates every month on it. But then kind of the palette that I've segued into after I hit Pan and Vox from Kat Von D, um, Mi Vita Look a Remix and Brown from the Lorac Mega Pro palette, I decided to pull out my Urban Decay Naked Basics 2 for the shades Primal and Undone because they are quite similar. Well, Undone is a lot cooler toned than Vox, but it does work really well if you want just a quick um, a brow powder. That's what I'm currently doing with it. It's a little bit cool toned for my hair color going on right now, but it works. It, it does really, really well to just kind of frame out my face, fill in my brows. So I've made some progress on it. I still haven't hit pan in it, but we're going to keep working on it. And then this shade Primal right here is very similar to Brown from the Lorac, Pro, or Lorac Mega Pro palette. Pardon me. And it works really well as a subtle contour. So I am currently wearing it as my contour today and I have enjoyed it. So, and then I figure when I'm done with white chocolate, I can go in with Stark and Skimp right here. I have used a pan of Skip before back when I panned my Urban Decay Naked palette. So I figured I could mix these two or just use them on their own and that'll give me a way to really make some progress in yet another palette from my collection. So, whew! That feels really good. Okay, going on into eye bases. The two things that I brought out. I have two of the exact same thing, basically, um, because I wanted to see which formula I preferred. So, in in kind of the spirit of the olive shade, using Sumptuous Olive, or if you're using Immaculate from Kat Von D, or any of your favorite Army khaki greens in your collection, I pulled out these two eyeshadow crayons. One of them is from Nude Sticks. This is in the shade Queen Olive, and the Julep version is in the shade Olive Shimmer. This is what they look like on the skin. They're slightly different, but on the eyes, you really can't tell the difference. So they both work really, really well. I've enjoyed using both. Today I have on the Julep version. So I kind of wanted to talk about them both because if you're shopping the VIB sale and you want something really fall um, flavored with your makeup, the Queen Olive shade is really, really lovely. If you want to also kind of mimic this look with things in your collection or wear it on its own. And then if you are more of an Ulta fan, the Julep is available there. So Sephora, Ulta. Feels really, really good. I made some progress on both of those. And then kind of moving into more eye makeup. I didn't do a, a Justice League Panning Challenge update for the month of October because I figured the challenge is ending in uh, about two weeks. So I wanted to kind of save it for then, but I'm still working on the Wonder Woman shade right here, making tons of progress. And then I'm back into working on this blue shade for Superman. I've been using it to line my lower lash line on top of the Maybelline Lasting Drama Eyeliner in the shade Lustrous Sapphire. These two look really, really pretty together. Let me kind of show you what this Bare Minerals shade looks like it's been a lot of fun. It pairs really well with the olive shades if you're wanting to kind of shake things up and then you could do a burgundy lip 
and get all of that kind of fall vibe. You could even pair this with a mustard um, brown on your eye. It's super, super fun. And like I said, with the, the Maybelline eyeliners, I love these. They're super creamy, easy to work with, and they don't budge on my face. So kind of fun to use. So still working on these. And then I also, I was able to finish this um, uh, L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise in Mystic Black. It's finally at the point, it's so clumpy that it's beginning to be really, really difficult to use. So calling it done. And I repurchased the Pure Cosmetics Magnetic Lash. I received my first tube um, via Octoly for review and I loved it so much that I went on and spent my own money and rebought the tube from Ulta. So I'm super excited to bust into that tomorrow morning. And then I've made more progress with my um, MAC Paint Pot and Soft Ochre. Still haven't hit pan, but I'm using it every time I apply my makeup. So progress is progress, right? And then, I've also made progress on two lipsticks. I really kind of went with the liquid lipstick kick for this month. The first one, I wore this quite a bit. This is the Kat Von D um, Everlasting Liquid Lipstick in the shade Project Chimps. I'm not scraping the sides yet, but I am getting to the point where I'm noticing I'm having to scrape a little bit more and more. I bought this last year. Did I buy it last year? Uh, around this time. So it's been about a year. It's been really, really fun. It's kind of a nice fiery orangey red. It really lasts all day. So that's really nice. And then kind of a surprising feature. I wasn't intending to intentionally pan this, but it's kind of the lip that I keep in my purse. This is the Wet n Wild um, Liquid Cat Suit Lipstick in the shade Give Me Mocha. I'm at the point it's going to be kind of hard to see on camera, but I'm starting to scrape the sides of this liquid lipstick. I posted a picture on Instagram yesterday, I think. I think it was yesterday that you can start seeing a little bit of the sides. So that feels really good too. And then um, going on with face products, I've made tons of progress in these. The first off being primer. I've been using up the Amazing Cosmetics Anti-Aging Face Primer. I'm doing the shake method that I've talked about in that Project Painting Hack video where you make sure that there's a little bit of air in the tube and then you shake the snot out of it so that way all the product falls to the bottom. I don't even think I have more than about two days worth of product left. It feels more and more empty and if I cut it open, there's not gonna be anything on the sides of this. So I'm gonna go on and finish this out. And I'm also continuing to use this Clarins concealer that I received from Octoly. I, I had used it for a, about two weeks when I, sorry about that, my attention was needed with my kids. So one of the things that I talked about at the beginning of October was this um, Clarins Mission Perfection Eye Concealer. It's SPF 15 that targets dark circles. I had been using it at that point for a little bit to know enough that I love this product. I am still loving, loving, loving this product. I have made tons of progress. As you can see, this is great in the mornings um, when I'm just trying to get out the door and get my kids to school just to kind of make everything appear a little bit brighter, more awake, and not be covered in a ton of makeup. I love the applicator of this because you can turn it on and off where you don't have to worry about products squeezing out everywhere. It's a perfect um, salmon-y colored concealer, so I highly recommend this. It is on the expensive side in terms of concealer, but this is great, great stuff, and it feels really good going on. I just put a little bit in between my ring fingers and I rub it together and then apply it to my eyes and it works super, super well on an everyday basis. I go through in the morning and put it on and then of course when I apply my makeup, this is the main concealer that I'm reaching for. This is really, really good stuff. And then in terms of powder, I went on and showed my Amazing Cosmetics um, translucent press powder at the beginning of the month. I had a little bit of pan. I have expanded that pan. So here, is where I currently am. I have not decided if I'm gonna go on and just keep this in for November or if I'm gonna go on and switch to another powder because I do have a couple more that I want to have some more progress on before I just straight finish them. Foundation, that's another exciting one. So I pulled out a bottle that I had in my backup stash of the Wet n Wild Photo, Photo Finish Foundation in Buff Bisque. I didn't realize there wasn't that much left in the bottle so I scraped out what I could and my spatula will not go up into the upper sections of this bottle. So got out what I could and I pulled out another bottle out of my collection that I didn't realize was at the bottom. So I scraped out what I could of that. So now I have two 
bottles of foundation that are essentially done. I might have one more use between these two using my beauty spatula. So that was a surprising um, amount of progress for the past month. And then also I'm making tons um, of, of progress on this Mario Badescu facial spray with aloe, cucumber, and green tea because I'm going through and using this to kind of prep my face before I apply my makeup and then I set my face with it. So um, I'm sitting at about mm, a little bit less than half. And then I also, during this month, I picked up the Flower Beauty um, Dewy Setting Spray from Walmart and I've been using that to set my face when I'm done with my makeup, but I'm gonna talk more about that in the November makeup bag because that one is a worthwhile purchase if you're wanting a drugstore setting spray that smells lovely and does the job and, and your makeup won't budge. So that's it. It's been a big month, a big month of progress, a big month of um, just kind of switching things out. It feels just incredible to be able to um, kind of spread, spread around more of my makeup collection, use up especially some more eyeshadows. So. Um, it's, it's been good. I hope that you are enjoying shopping your stash, that you're having fun panning because it really, it's, it's such a worthwhile, um, almost cathartic <laughs> experience to go through and, and get your money's worth out of a lot of these things that, that we've been accumulating over the past couple of years. So that is about it for the moment. I'm going to have some more videos as I have a little bit more time to sit down and film. So be on the lookout for those and take care. Have a very safe and happy Halloween with your family and friends. And I look forward to catching up with you real soon. See ya.